test, Lynx effect. With over 430 million subscribers, Vodafone have total assets of just over £150 billion. In 2010, they settled an unpaid tax dispute by handing the taxman a cool £1.25 billion. Whilst denied by Vodafone, it was widely reported in sections of the media that they in fact owed the much larger sum of £6 billion. Vodafone, a British company, managed to legally avoid paying huge sums by having subsidiary companies in countries like Switzerland, where the tax threshold is far lower. The office in Bern, to where these enormous sums are diverted, is currently manned by a single employee. And the Vodafone tax exile bug is spreading. McLaren's Vodafone-sponsored Formula One drivers Jensen Button and Lewis Hamilton avoid paying tax simply by living in tax havens. As a British resident, if you don't feel like paying your taxes, you are free to do so too. In prison. Yeah, we just got here. No, it's cool, I'm sure it'll be fine. Jolian, uh, Vodafone Swiss, how are you doing? I'm okay. Did you get the email from Amanda? No. Well, we're doing the uh, F1 uh, offshore promotion. We're starting it in, in London. Uh, and so, what? You, do you want to check? You got the email from Amanda? Just one in that window there, and then one in that window there, okay? Great. That's fantastic. If you can just get the sign up, please, mate. I'm slightly confused as to why you don't know about it. How come she's off? That's also very interesting. Uh, well, we take that quite seriously in Switzerland. What have you put up on it's the just the, it's just the new it's just the new branding, basically. It's just Vodafone taking Britain for a ride. I don't know what the foggiest is going on. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, that no, looks great. Keeping Britain in the red. Fantastic. Yeah, offshore. Completely offshore. Totally offshore. Welcome to Inside the Story. I'm Dale May, fearless hetero journalist who's not afraid to be unafraid. I deliver fair, impartial news as it happens, wherever it happens, telling you the right way to think. Hello, I'm Dale Maley, and today I'm in London for the most important day in the last 60 years. Because today we're here to celebrate Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth II by the grace of God in Britain, Ireland and the British Dominions, Queen Beyond the Sea. Defender of the faith. What's the best thing about being British? The Queen. <laughs> how, how good is she? Amazing. Yeah. Does it make you proud to be British when you see the beautiful landscape of Pitt and Middleton's bum? I mean, no offence, but it is a royal heirloom. <laughs> I wish I had one. No, me too. <laughs> My fantastic pictures here uh, of nation by nation uh, that fell under our reign. Uh, Jamaica, Australia, New Zealand, uh, the Gambia, and plenty of other African ones whose names I don't know. How grateful are you for the Queen and her ancestors for civilising you. Is it good to know that the Queen is better than you? Oh, yeah. You wouldn't... Yeah, of course. What would you do to get a ticket to the next royal wedding? Would you drink a cup of dishwater? Probably. Well, the British Empire, eh? What a story. We gave the world uh, cricket. We gave the world civilization, Slavery. So much to be proud of. Oh, yeah, definitely. I think everyone should be proud of it. If you had to chop off the head of one royal, who would it be and why? One royal. Don't you think it's generous of the Queen to grant us a day off to let us feel how she does every I day? I think it's brilliant. Yeah. Would you just take a moment with me on camera to remember her? Take a moment to remember her? Yes. What does that mean? Just take a moment. Coming up, the loony left-wing protesters want to abolish the monarchy, but they didn't count on Her Majesty's favourite shit-kicking journalist turning up. Me. Is this really about democracy, or is it about the fact that Prince William's shagging Kate Middleton and you're not? <laughs> no, well, I, I, uh, I'm... Uh, you're you're I lost, aren't you? You don't know what to say, and the fact well. is that you realise that you're defying the word of God, and you feel guilty. Isn't that the case? No limits, no rules, and no Geneva Convention. Let's shackle ourselves in for Guantanamo Bay Sports Day. 
Established under George W. Bush to detain suspected terrorists, we've kept the baddies under lock and key in this Cuban hellhole since 2002. Today, we've got the guards, we've got the inmates, we've got those sexy little cheerleaders. We've even got the good old-fashioned armed English police. Those pistols, how cute! And today, we've brought the action to good old London, England. And we're outside the U.S. Embassy, the only true bastion of freedom in this limey shithole. Now the day's first degrading event, the Human Pyramid. Inspired by our military personnel in our superior Iraqi detention center in Abu Ghraib. <laughs> that is some grade-A human pyramid action right there in front of the U.S. Embassy. The inmates have scored a handful of points, and maybe they'll be allowed a phone call home to their wives. Just kidding, we don't give a ramadan. And look, a special guest appearance in the crowd today from the famous hooded man with arms outstretched. He's really milking his newfound celebrity. Rumors are that he's now dating Lindsay Lohan. Why don't you stop out some cigarettes and some heads? And when the round is over, they're still all the best of friends. One, two, one, two, three. USA land on the free. Woo! Hello, madam. Hello. Hello. Hello, Hello. sir. In 2010, the British public was treated to its first coalition government since the end of the Second World War. An unequal coming together of David Cameron's Conservative Party, who have pretty much most of the power, and that other party with Nick Clegg. It can be a historic and seismic shift in our political landscape. In this series, we follow two of the coalition's lesser-known MPs, Conservative James Twottington Burbage and Liberal Democrat Barnaby Plankton as we try to understand just how this relationship could possibly work. Today is the London mayoral elections, and whilst the main contenders, Boris Johnson, Ken Livingstone, Brian Paddock and Jenny Jones prepare themselves, James and Barnaby are out drumming up support for their party representatives. Hello. Uh, I was just wondering if you'd voted yet today. Yes. Oh, right. And, and could I ask how, how you voted? Well, there's certainly nothing to do with that colour. Oh, is it not? No, I can't stand you lot. Right. Hello. Uh, you must be a Tory by the look of it. I am, yes. I've fucked up the country. We, sorry, what? You've fucked up the country. Just to let you know uh, that uh, Ed Miliband is gay. Oh, why are you saying that? Bankers. Bastardy. Oh, but bankers, they're, they're jolly good chaps, really. No, they've got bloody good, bloody hard no, time. They're, not. they're cunts. Excuse me? Yeah. <laughs> well, they're, they're cunts. <laughs> no job is worth £16 million of a bonus. But you're not going to vote for Ken, I hope. No, I'm not going to vote for Ken. Great, OK. Because I, I heard rumours that he's a drug addict, so we wouldn't want anyone to do that. Like that. Have you voted? Not going to vote Lib Dems. Not, not going to vote Lib no. Dems? No. Just, Why not? Uh, feel a little bit. Uh, Let down. Let down. I was sorry about that. What if we gave you 50 quid for your vote? No, you would never get it. 100 quid? No, no. 200 quid? No, no. no. Come on, 300 quid? No, no. If I told you that the Tories made us, they were really mean to us and they said if we didn't do what they said, they'd... Uh... That, that, that doesn't fill me with the greatest confidence then, does it? Yeah, well, we that's didn't like want saying, to talk on that's behalf like saying of the people. the Tories wanted you to jump off a bridge, so you did They it. did ask that, yes. Um, is, this, is this your property, is it? It is indeed. Could you possibly, you know, take some of this down, perhaps? <laughs> I must get on to work. Why the blue door? You must be a swing voter. All right, well, thank you. Bye-bye. Right, bye. So as it's shocking as it may be to some of you viewers, I've found disturbing evidence that suggests that a load of foreigners, gypsies and anti-royalists have come down to the Queen's celebrations to demonstrate. So I'm going to go and tell those treasonous peasants what's what. Did you laugh when the Queen Mother died? No. I bet you did. What were you doing? Where were you when she died? Were you responsible for her death? I was at home. So it's a well-known fact that if we got rid of the Queen, within a couple of years we'd be a communist state led by anarchists like Ken Livingstone. Is that what you really want? No, we would be a nice, free, democratic state. Are you sure? Much like um, Ireland or Germany, for example, where they are... Uh, Look at the French. They're a bunch of arseholes and they got rid of their monarchy. That's a bit... You want us to be like the French? Harsh. Which of this lot has been paid to go and assassinate her? None. Isn't the point truly that this bunch of anarchist hippies is just not really cricket? Well, what's cricket or not is a matter of... Cricket's so, a game. Uh, is a, it's a you don't even know what cricket you, is? You're using a metaphor. You're using a metaphor. Sorry. Am I? Yes. Am I? Oh, you don't even know Am what... I? You don't know what a metaphor is? Metaphor what? 
<laughs> what if you're a metaphor? You've just used the metaphor. You don't know what it means. Um, you want to ask the question again? What's a metaphor? A benefit cheat. You benefit cheat. Right. Lives in the area. What a bastard. Yeah. We're just letting everyone know, really. We're trying to name and shame. Wow. Yeah, his name is, is George Osborne. George Osborne says it's time to get tough on benefit scroungers, describing them as no different from muggers who rob you in the street. But people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Some MPs have two homes, one in London and another in the area they represent, and it's the taxpayer who foot the bill for the MP's second home. In 2003, George Osborne flipped his second home status over to his farmhouse in Tatton, Cheshire, where he's an MP. But just before he did that, he remortgaged the property, which he already owned outright. Multi-millionaire George then had the taxpayer fork out for the interest repayments to the tune of about £100,000. But then this is the same guy who once claimed £47 for two copies of a DVD of his own speech on value for taxpayers' money. And I think the British people have a strong sense of what is fair. What we're going to do is we're going to put a plaque on his house, you see. It says, um, George Osborne, Benefit Scrounger. And uh, it's just to commemorate his services to benefit scrounging, really. George, if you needed £100,000 that badly, why didn't you ask us to write you a cheque? Oh, yeah, because you're a multi-millionaire and we'd have told you to fuck off. Those with the most need to pay more. There's a booing here as the Republicans actually uh, have decided to go crazy and started chanting devil-worshipping things. They're saying... Elect a head of state, uh, they're booing, as you can see over here. Uh, people who love the monarchy, good British people, uh, are, are, are totally terrified by this. Would you like to get rid of the Queen? Yes, I would Is like to. Is your mother ashamed of you? So, do you think you're going to burn in hell for some of the things you're saying? Do I look like an anarchist? Yes. Uh, I can categorically assure you that the Republic's official position is we do not want, wish to convert Buckingham Palace into a mosque. So, that's an official statement. They will not turn Buckingham Palace into a mosque. Well, it's been quite an extraordinary day here in London. I've civilised the foreigners, taught the Republicans a thing or two and realised that being British is the most important thing in the entire world. This is Dale Maley getting inside the story at the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. Thanks, Mum. After the morning's door-to-door -door canvassing, James is now taking matters into his own hands to get more votes for Conservative mayoral candidate Boris Johnson. What are, what are you doing, James? Uh, nothing. Pop-up polling station. Pop-up polling station? Yeah, we did a bit of a think tank. We thought it was a good idea. Is that, is that approved, officially? Well, yeah, sort of, yeah. If you just want to come this way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Why? Put, put a cross there. Uh, then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get your... Uh, Vote off tickety boo, as it were. First, second. Yeah, first is best. <clears throat> uh, well, that's for Boris, uh, and that's for Boris and as well. For Boris. Uh, you can just do Boris second. It's just only Boris. The only option is Boris. Is it? James, have you made these ballot papers <laughs> yourself? It just oh. says Boris on it. Is it? James, there's not even Lib Dem on there. <laughs> uh, if you fold it up, no one can look. Secret ballot. You just put it in there. Thank you very much. That's great. Thanks very much. That's fine. Yeah. OK. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Miliband will make a speech uh, quite shortly, actually, arguing that the challenge is to make Britain a fairer country when there is no money to spend. My, my speech today is about values. To demonstrate once and for all that the Labour Party is a party for all times, not just the good times. A lot of people will hear me talk about values and say, welcome to the real world. Values cost money. But right now, the government just doesn't have money to spend. A lot of people say, these are tough times. 
It's easy to talk about fairness, but how are you going to achieve it when there's less money around? USA! USA! Crashing terror every day! Whoa! Welcome back to Guantanamo Bay Sports Day, live from the American Embassy London. A quick warm-up game for the guards. Who can throw the Universal Declaration of Human Rights the furthest? Can you take me home, please? Can you give me a lift home, bro, please? I'm from Bradford. Next, it's the waterboarding event. Lots of opportunities for the guards to score points here. No opportunities for the terrorists. Sounds unfair? Hey, so was 9-11, bitches. We're going, we're going, we're going. You did oh. rape me once. That was only because you were doing your job, weren't you? I was all doing my job, man. That's you what go. I have to do. That's I mean, what the how, long, how long until I can go home now? 20, 30 years. Let's see how tough these terrorists really are. If they can cope with sudden exposure to sunlight after years of sensory deprivation, they get a point each. Hey, Muhammad, maybe you could borrow a burqa from one of your wives. At the end of a remarkable day, America is victorious again. And we can sleep safe in the knowledge that the real winner today was freedom. Do you think you'll get a trial? What, for the Olympics? I hope, I think I'm on the back of today's performance. I think there's every possibility. While the ballot boxes for the London mayoral election are being counted, James and Barnaby are in the media centre of City Hall awaiting the results. We could get the result in the next half hour. You can make yourself in a moment here. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to be on TV? Do you want to be on TV? Yeah. Watch this. This is what Daddy was used to do. See this up. Right now, right now, mm. this is live TV. Right now. Right. Look at that screen. Mm. That's your face, Barney. Oh, what's What's your that? fucking face on live TV? See that? Yeah. Get yours out. Right. Look important. Right. Mm. But just keep looking at this. Mm. Look at it and go like this. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Just do that. Oh. Yeah. Just look at it together. Mm. Oh, you're on TV. Amazing. Mad, isn't it? Amazing. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed for being with us. I just want to grab a quick word with Jenny Jones here, who's the Green candidate. I just saw you. I caught you out the corner of my eye. See that woman? That's Jenny Jones. Right. She's a lesbian. No, she's not. She's just a Green Party candidate. Filthy, bloody. You do know an awful lot. Jenny, just wanted to say congratulations. How does it feel so far? Well, I'm feeling third. That feels very, very good. Well, well congratulations. Good yes, thank you. Hey, all right, you're all right. Good, good thanks, to you. Me. Yeah, very much. Whilst rain across the UK led to flooding this summer, hosepipe bans were put into place by water companies. But no hosepipe ban can help the water industry in England and Wales, as they lose 3.36 billion litres of water per day in leaks. If all the pipes could be fixed, it would save enough water to supply 22.4 million people every day. Thames Water alone loses 664.6 million litres of water per day whilst in 2011 made £600 million in operating profits. Come on, hurry up. Come on, you lot. Take that look off your face. Yeah. Just brought some kids in here. We saw the hose pipe ban. We were a bit concerned about the amount of water that was being lost. I caught these three um, using their water pistols. Um, they were taking it from a hose pipe. Yeah. And we've been collecting water from all the leaks for the last couple of days. Yeah. And they're in flagrant disregard of the law, and we, we want to know what you're going to do with them. Yeah. What am I going to do with them? They were spraying each other up and down the high street. Oh, okay. With uh, water pistols. Today's uh, water pistol user is tomorrow's high pipe bandit. So, if you take the cuffs off them, please. Absolutely. What are you going to do with them? I'm going to have a chat with them about Good. a hosepipe ban. Will, yeah. will you assure us that you'll impress upon them how serious a hosepipe ban is? Yeah. In this time of drought, when 665 million litres of water are already being lost by Thames Water, the last we need is kids having fun in the street with water pistols. Everything she says, you listen to her. And if she beats you, you don't have access to lawyers. This is not a conventional economic crisis of the kind Britain has had to deal with in the recent past. This is a debt crisis. Deficit reduction and growth, they are not alternatives. Delivering the first is absolutely vital in securing the second. Now, Britain cannot cut itself off from what happens elsewhere. As our biggest trading partner, the problems in the Eurozone are affecting Britain too. Look across the country at Honda in Swindon, Jaguar Land Rover in the West Midlands, Toyota in Derby, Nissan in Sunderland, Britain's car industry is growing. 
And it's not just our car industry that is strong. Life sciences, pharmaceuticals, information technology, aerospace, the creative industries. Now, I cannot predict how this crisis will end for others. And I cannot pretend that Britain will be immune from the consequences either. Thank you very much for listening, and I look forward to answering your questions. Thank you. BBC OMG WTF. OMG, yeah? BBC OMG WTF, fam. OK. You that? feeling it? Yeah, why not? Sam, what's, what's, what's up, G? What up, G? All right, we're going to play a little game. It's called Do's and Don'ts, OK? Right. VIP rooms. Do. Do. You've got pretty fly hair. How long does it take you to, uh, to style your hair? How long does it style my hair? Male grooming. Done. Oh, do our hair? I'm, I'm not very long. Two minutes, to be honest. Two minutes, yeah, Ryan. Yeah, literally. Straight yeah. Bit, bit, bit seriously, what would you do about the current crisis of austerity? The crisis of what? One word for David Cameron. Why are we here? Why are we here? Why are we? Why are we here? Summer chain ball? Oh, you mean Why here on the planet? Yeah. On Earth? The meaning of life. What happens when we die? According to Energy Watchdog Offgen, profit for dual fuel customers rose 733% in 2011. In the meantime, hypothermia-related deaths and hospital admissions have almost doubled in the past five years. In the first half of 2011, the big six energy companies posted profits of around £3.5 billion, with some of them raising energy prices by up to three times over inflation. EDF alone pocketed record profits of £1.59 billion. While pensioners are struggling to keep warm, it would seem the energy companies have money to burn. Oh, that's lovely. It's all right, Granny, don't that's worry. That's great. Sorry about that, Granny. Do you want your blanket? Yep, that's fine. Here's your blanket. You are defrosting after the winter. I know it was You're a cold right, winter. You're right, Granny. All right, you can yeah. actually just, have tea and I'll heating uh, because it, we're not home You're anymore. Right. We're in the EDF office and they've got loads of money. This is Hello, sir. Oh, we're, we're just um, installing our grannies here for the winter it's because really they've just oh, defrosted no problem, after the winter. They're still Hang quite cold. This is my grandma. Trying to meet her. Um, we just thought we'd leave our grannies here until next winter. I mean, I should say thanks, really, because my granny actually stuck her head in the oven last year. Yeah, um, and, you know, you guys managed to turn the gas off just, to the just last before, minute. you know, yeah. she actually turned so the you heat saved on, her so life, you really. saved her life. This is the guy who's making um, £168 a second with his friends in the energy companies. Oh, nice. Yeah. 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 Um, if you're staying for supper, you're very welcome, but please take your shoes off. I don't know, Granny, they're all a bit mean here. Yeah. yeah aren't they? Yeah. Granny, he's touching me. You mustn't touch him. No. Tell him, Granny. Yeah. Should we leave you here? It is warmer than home. Will you look after them? She likes two sugars and she does flamenco on Wednesdays. Bye, darling. Bye. Bye. Bye, Granny. Bye. Prince Harry, welcome to BBC OMG WTF. Look, huge respect on the strip billiards and the busty nudie hen fun. They were fit. Is it true that the Queen's been Skyping you and egging you on? Um, I haven't had a chance to speak to her um, on the actual trip. Um, I had a little, a, a brief conversation with her, a well, half an hour conversation before we came out. And, um, and yeah, she, she, you know, she wished me luck and, and I sort of explained where we were going and what we were doing, what I thought we were doing. Most of it was different to what the programme had, but, um, <laughs> And, uh, and yeah, no, we had a, a great chat and she said, you know, enjoy it. And I said, you know, I hope, I hope I do you proud. And that was that, you know, it's a typical grandmother to grandson thing, if you could see it like that. No, I'm sure she is proud, but those photos, BBC OMG WTF. I tell you what, um, it's, been a, it's been an emotional trip. Two uh, ballot boxes went missing. Amazing sorts of rumours have been going round that there may be a recount. We're waiting for one constituency, Brenton Harrow. I didn't yeah, vote. Listen, OK, you're in it. I'm sure. I won't have you, I won't have you drag me into this photo fraud. I won't have it. Uh, James. Sure now, Barney. Uh, what's that in your hand, James? Nothing. Yes, it's a, it's a ballot box. Oh, yes, so it is. And, it, and, it, and it's full of Labour votes. Oh, look, a floating voter. 
<laughs> James, that's an electoral fraud! And it's also definitely littering! If I knew something about that, do you think I should tell someone? Yeah. Right. What do you know? What's happened? Oh, I don't know anything. Well, it did turn out that, whatever, someone had, you know, done a box and thrown it in the brain. They go to jail, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. Almost certainly. Listen, did you hear they heard that they found that ballot that box in <laughs> Brent? Yeah. yeah. Two ballot boxes. Two, do you think that's um, some fraudulent well, thing? Or? People in Birmingham who uh, did vote rigging, I think, in a couple of years. Yes. All right. It's quite a while, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Dad, they fucking did it, all right? They fucking threw the box in bread, and they don't think they fucking found it, Dad. Fuck, 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 fuck. Tad Barney, he's gonna fucking lose it. Vote of fraud, vote of fraud, vote of fraud. What the fuck? I can see him now, he's a fucking pussy. My shingles is coming back, I can feel it. The race to be Mayor of London, well, we've been saying it for hours, is expected to be announced shortly. Boris, just wanted to say from the boys, well done. PM, Boris, number 10. The result is fairly imminent. There you can see uh, Boris Johnson, Ken Livingston, uh, taking his place. I therefore declare Boris Johnson to be elected as the Mayor of London. <laughs> Boris! What a winner, what a winner, absolute winner. Boris! Thank you very much, Mr. Returning Officer. Yeah, Mr. Boris Johnson, the mayor. Send that down to your. Well, it might be too late. The box, so don't worry. The order of the votes they received. Don't worry, Barn. Daddy sorted it. You a bit shaken up? Need a bit of a scare, yes. You're one of us now, Barn. One of us. Do you mean it? Yeah. The Revolution on three. Jeff tweets, try not to wet myself at The Revolution will be televised. Shannon says, brutal honesty is the best kind. And Tom adds, hello, BBC Three. I'd just like to say I like orange juice. That is my comment. Go online to the BBC Three website and have your say on our Facebook page or Twitter. And The Revolution will be televised continues next Wednesday at 10.